Hello and welcome to my channel. My name's Ali and this here is Sparkles. Yes, this little man is called Sparkles. Damn, it feels good to be a gangster. And yes, he was named by my six-year-old daughter. And I expect as he gets older and she gets older, the name will change to something more like Sparky, a little bit more manly. But for now, his name is Sparkles. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about how to cut costs when owning a chinchilla. Now, in the UK, and I don't know what it's like around the rest of the world, but certainly in the UK, we are suffering a big cost of living crisis. And a lot of people are having to give up their pets because it's just too much money now and they cannot afford it. And I just wanted to go into some tips of how you can actually save money with chinchillas. Obviously there's certain things that you can't scrimp and save on like chinchilla's health. If a chinchilla needs to go to a vet, they need to go to a vet. You can't scrimp and save on that. That's what they need. But there certainly are things that you can do to make the cost slightly less for the owner. Most of this video is going to be focused on people that already own chinchillas, but the first actual thing I'm gonna bring up is for people that haven't even got chinchillas yet and are looking at getting chinchillas, and that is the cost of a cage. Now, the easiest way to save money on a cage is quite obvious, it's to look on sites that you can get them second hand on so pre-owned so for example in the uk we have a lot of free classified ads like for example pre-loved pets for homes and also gumtree you may find second hand cages available on there and also it's worth looking on ebay as well because sometimes they have used cages on there what i would say is if you're going to get a used cage make sure it is actually suitable for chinchillas and if you are going to get a used cage make sure you disinfect it thoroughly before you let your chinchillas into a new cage like that also you could try looking for when there's sales on for example pet city will often have sales on their chinchilla cages and rat cages there's other sites that may have sales on from time to time now one thing it may be tempting to do is to buy a cheap cage from somewhere like amazon um, cages that aren't actually suitable for chinchillas so for example bird cages i see this quite often people have bought cages that say my budgies are in and have used them for chinchillas. And the trouble with these cages is they're designed for birds. They're not particularly robust, so are not really suitable for chinchillas. Chinchillas need a cage with a little bit more oomph. There's not enough strength in them for chinchillas. They are designed for birds. So I love my budgie cage for my budgies, but I wouldn't put a chinchilla in there. So the next one is ledges. Now ledges in your cage are really, really important. They need plenty of places to hop to and from because it's a massive part of how they exercise. It's actually more of a way they exercise in the wild, more than wheels. It's more important to have ledges in your cage and they need places to hop to and from. But I do often see influencers online showing off their cages with ledges and shelves that have really intricate designs on them and maybe have like shelves with castles on them and chinchilla hides that in the shape of boats and houses and castles and beds in their cages and all kinds of things like that. And these are incredibly expensive and often influence will tell you this is the bare minimum this is what they need and it's entirely not true they do not need all that intricate stuff keeping it simple does not make you a bad owner what chinchillas do need is lots of different surfaces to actually jump on so not all the same shape of wood so all different sizes shapes and maybe some natural wood in there as well. And the reason for this is because if chinchillas stay on one flat surface the entire time, they can get a thing called pressure sores on the chinchilla's feet because they're constantly, they're using the same part of their feet all the time, it can cause pressure sores. And you don't want that. So you want to have lots of variety of different shapes and sizes of wood and also lots of different surfaces in your cage anyway. It's not necessary to have all this intricate designs. If you haven't got a house box shaped like a castle, you're not a bad chinchilla owner. If you just have a simple square hide 
it's not any different for the chinchilla the chinchilla does not care if you go simple don't feel bad and don't feel like you're giving them less than they need because you're going simple with it even if you buy ready-made shelves for your chinchillas and ledges for your chinchillas that are just simple ledges they can still be astronomical see i was feeling a bit lazy this week and i thought i'll look online to find some ready-made ledges because I didn't want to cut some wood and um, I was astonished by the price of these ledges that I was seeing in the UK and I thought if people are buying these that is ridiculous because you can make your own it is quite simple to do in the UK you can go to places like Wix, B&Q, Homebase and ask them you need kiln dried white wood that has not been treated and often they may even cut it to size for you if you ask nicely now if you have a timber yard near you i have a timber merchant near me and i will go in there and i will ask them for white wood that is kiln dried and they often will have it available for me and if they're in a good mood only if they're in a good mood they will cut it to size for me but if they don't cut it for size for me what you need to make your own shelves and your own ledges at home is the wood which is much much cheaper than buying ready-made ledges and a saw and a drill that is all you need you can have a hand saw it doesn't have to be electric that's all you need to be able to make your own shelves and ledges and it's far far cheaper i personally make all my own ledges and i make all my own house boxes i actually use screws or bolts to fix them to my cage if you use screws you've got to be extremely careful that if the screw becomes exposed because they've chewed and chewed and chewed and got to the screw area you need to replace that immediately and take out the screws because if you don't they could damage themselves and hurt themselves on sharp edges of the screw so yeah that's the only downside of using screws if you don't want to screw, use screws you can use bolts as well to bolt them in now what i would avoid doing with regards to ledges is i'd avoid buying cheap cheap wood like MDF plywood and chipboard because these are not suitable for your chinchilla and if they chew it and ingest them it can actually make them quite ill and overall you could end up with a very very hefty vet bill if they become ill because you've decided to put in MDF or plywood in your cage because it's cheaper it won't be cheaper in the long run because you could run into health issues with your chinchilla so next one is toys now yes chinchillas do love toys but they again they don't need to be extravagant if you want to save money i would actually avoid chinchilla toys that have lots of vine and bamboo and palm leaves on them just because if you put a toy like that in your chinchilla's cage they will dismantle it and destruct it within I would say 30 minutes if you want a toy that's going to last a bit longer I would go for wooden toys because it's a little bit longer for them to chew through them and actually destroy their board and break board and breakers it will last you a bit longer obviously they are meant to be destroyed by your chinchilla but you want them to last a bit longer than 30 minutes or so also you can make your own toys they don't need to be say extravagant you can buy the chain fittings for toys and you can simply drill a hole in some wood and place it on the hanging chain and that will keep them amused for hours a couple of bits of hanging wood will keep them amused for a long time also things like willow sticks apple sticks hazel sticks these are quite cheap to buy but they absolutely love them not only is it a good boredom breaker for them they also like them as a treat if you know someone that's got apple trees or pear trees just maybe ask them whether when they do their pruning of their apple trees could you possibly have some of the sticks that's a decent way of getting sticks for little to no cost the only thing i would say is if you're going to go and get your own apple wood and your own pear wood and your own birch wood and your own hazel wood i would say make sure it's from a disease free tree and make sure you clean it thoroughly make sure you bake the sticks before you give them to your chinchilla so they are dry the whole way through things that might be tempting to save money but actually probably will do more damage than good is to buy toys from 
Wish or even eBay sometimes because a lot of their toys don't actually come from the come from the UK or anywhere near the UK often they come from China and you don't necessarily know what wood has been used especially with items from Wish I wouldn't actually buy any pet products from Wish at all and put them in your chinchillas cage because you just do not know what you're going to get so yeah I'd avoid those because even though they seem cheap you don't know if it's going to make your chinchilla unwell now next one diet now to save money on diet I buy in bulk now obviously some people can't do this because it means you have to have money up front but in the long run it will save you money for example I buy 10 sacks of my chinchilla pellets and I buy them directly from the mill so I know exactly where my chinchilla pellets are coming from. And if I buy branded stuff, I also buy it in bulk when it's on sale. Timothy hay as well, I buy in bulk. I don't buy individual bags of Timothy hay. I buy a big box. I buy that from Timothy hay UK. Also getting onto hay. Now I've seen this lots and lots and lots online where people will put mounds and mounds of hay in a chinchilla's cage every day. Now this is not necessary. A lot of people still think that chinchillas are like rabbits and the vast majority of their diet is in fact hay and that, and that only a small proportion of it is pellets and that's actually wrong. If you were talking about rabbits, I would say yes, my rabbit eats copious amounts of hay. My chinchillas don't. The main part of my chinchilla's diet is in fact the pellets and I will put a handful of hay in the chinchilla's cage every day. They will go foraging for it to find the best bits and it is a lot of fun for them to do that but you don't need to give them mounds and mounds. So the problem with giving them mounds and mounds of hay is one, they will always pick out the bits that they like the best and they won't necessarily eat the other bits so you won't get the full impact of them eating hay because they might not eat the stalky bits they might not eat um, the roughage that's in there which they might need for their teeth so, and they will leave the rest and it can cause them to become quite picky whereas if you limit it slightly and give them less they will tend to eat a lot more of every type of hay that's in your timothy hay so for example, if I, if, if I gave my chinchillas mounds and mounds of hay, I know exactly what they would do. They would all go for the flowery kind of ends of the hay and they wouldn't eat anything else because that's all they go for. And yeah, that can be a problem. And also it just means that you're throwing away a lot of hay every single day because they will eventually just get bored of it and will just leave it and we'll just pee on it. That is just not good for you because you're just chucking hay away and it's not good for them either because they're just picking out the best bits they want and then not eating any of the rest. As well, if you give them lots and lots of hay, it can cause them to just get bored of it altogether and just stop eating hay altogether. I know a lot of breed big breeders in the US don't actually give their chinchillas loose hay every day at all. They give their chinchillas loose hay once a week and the rest of the time they give them block hay. I'm not sure if I agree with that or not. I think that it's always nice to give them some loose hay every day, but that is what the big, big, big breeders in the US do and the really big show breeders do. And a lot of the breeders in the UK do as well. Although it's not something that I necessarily agree with, it's something they do do. So, you know, just bear in mind the fact that you don't actually need to give them mounds and mounds and mounds of hay every day it's just completely unnecessary just give them a handful a handful is plenty for them now the next one is aircon now if you live in the uk a portable aircon unit really is a must because we don't have aircon in our houses as standard so a portable aircon unit you cannot scrimp and save on it is something that definitely needs to be in place if you have chinchillas however if you want to buy one they often are available second hand on places like ebay and often on places like pre-loved and gumtree as well but once you have an aircon unit there is a way to save money on running costs so i've seen this a lot in the uk recently when the temperature reaches 20 21 degrees that's about 70 fahrenheit chinchilla owners in the uk tend to panic and they think right 
I must have the aircon on now. Now 20, 20 or 21 degrees in the UK is fine for a chinchilla. They're not going to start to suffer at that temperature. That is kind of room temperature for them and they will be absolutely fine at that temperature. So when it gets to that temperature, you don't necessarily need to switch on your aircon then. It's when it starts to rise to 22, 23, that's when you have to start putting on your aircon. And a lot of people make the mistake of putting on their aircon and setting it really, really low. So saying, I want the temperature to be 16 degrees in the room. Now, this is obviously going to cause the, the aircon unit to work harder to get it down to that 16 degrees, which is completely unnecessary. You don't need it that cold for your chinchilla. You just need it to maintain that 20 to 21 degrees kind of mark. You don't need it exceptionally, exceptionally cold. Now, I've seen a lot of things on my favorite, favorite sites on Facebook recently that basically people seem to be having a competition with each other to see what temperature they can get their chinchilla room down to. So people are saying, oh, I've got my chinchilla room down to 18 degrees and I've got my chinchilla room down to 15 degrees. And I think it's completely unnecessary. You don't need to run an aircon unit that cold and it's gonna cost you more money to run it that cold. To get the temperature down to that level is going to cost you a lot more money. So just set it so that it stays at a, so it stays at a steady 20 degrees. If it's struggling to maintain that temperature at 20 degrees and it keeps on going up and up and up, then you're obviously going to have to reduce the temperature settings on your aircon unit. But on the whole, you need for it to maintain a level of about 20 degrees. It doesn't need to be lower than that. Chinchillas are fine at 20 degrees. Believe me, I know I have 50 of them. I know what temperature they're actually fine at. Once they start getting to 22, 23 degrees, that is when they are going to start suffering and that is when you do definitely need to use your aircon unit. But yeah, don't stick it on when it's just 20 degrees because if it's 20 degrees in your house, that is fine. That is room temperature for them. They're not going to die from that. It's when it reaches higher and higher and higher levels that you need to have an aircon unit in place to actually reduce that down. But you don't then need to say, I need to set my aircon at 16 degrees and have your room at 16 degrees. It's just, it's, you're just wasting money. You might as well be throwing money down a the drain. They are my tips on how to save money when owning a chinchilla. So obviously some things you can't scrimp and save on, for example, chinchilla's health, definitely not. If a chinchilla needs to see a vet, they need to see a vet. Don't think you can save money on that. They, they just, if it, if it needs to happen, it needs to happen. You just have to bite the bullet and accept the costs involved in that. But things for day-to-day -day chinchilla life, there are things you can do to reduce money. So yeah. They are my tips. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I will see you in another video very, very soon. Goodbye for now.